I was born here in San Francisco, but I've lived in Sonoma County all my life. When I was a boy, there was no fences in Rona Park. You could walk out the back door and all the way downtown. When the street lights came on, it was time to go home for dinner. My mom always said an extra place just in case someone else needed to eat. My parents met at a USO dance. Dad was in the Navy and mom was a nurse. My siblings and I all went to the same school, St. Eugene's until eighth grade, and St. Vincent's for high school. In college, when me and my girlfriend found out we got pregnant, we got married. I dropped out, got a sales job at Macy's, and worked in materials management at Sutter Health for 14 years. We tried hard, but the relationship didn't work. After the divorce, a friend reached out. I was doing maintenance and landscaping at Safari West, a wildlife reserve in Santa Rosa. Her family owned a guest ranch nearby. Move here, she said. There's plenty of space, and it's close to your work. So I rented a cabin on her property for $1,100 a month and $50 for utilities. The ranch became my home. After work, I helped with the animals, did small repairs. I got to know the people who came from all over the world to staff the place for the summer. My ranch nickname was True. <clears> the <throat> night of the fire, I had my two kids there with me. Ashley's 19 and Ethan's 15. By the time the winds picked up, I had already gone to bed. Ashley came to my room about 11 p.m. Dad, Dad, something's wrong, she said. The smoke was thick and black. You couldn't see 10 feet. Get your stuff, get in the car, I told the kids. Our dog, Ernest, was too... My dog was too anxious to get in the car. I woke up for staff. I thought about going to corral the horses, but it kept on getting hotter and harder to breathe. About 11.30, we pulled onto the freeway. We saw all their cars with fire on their windshield wipers and tires. I drove to my parents' house and unloaded the kids. I turned back to get the dog. By the time I got there, the police had barricaded the ranch road. Two horses died on the ranch that night. Ernest didn't make it. The barn, the main house, two single wide trailers burned to the ground. All I had left was what I was wearing, a pair of pajamas and my tennis shoes. After the fire, every day felt like a month. On Wednesday, I went down to the local assistance center to fill out payment paperwork. I helped beat back the fires that were still burning around Safari West, and I got a second job shipping and receiving. When I started to hear about the assistance coming in, I went to check on my status. We haven't been able to verify your address, FEMA said. Do you have any documentation? My lease agreement had burned in the fire. All I had was an old propane bill in the glove box. So I gave them my landlord's phone number and sat down to wait. Your landlord won't confirm your occupancy, they said. I was confused. She didn't answer when I called. So I tried another guy from the ranch. He said they'd been renting to several of us under the table and didn't want to get caught. I had no idea. There's been a lot of fraudulent claims, the Vima rep said. I was too upset to respond. Months went by with no progress. I requested old Comcast bills, got a statement from Ethan's school. Okay, we believe you live there, FEMA said, but you don't have any losses. And then, even if you do have losses, you waited too long to file. I was about to give up when someone from Catholic Charities referred me to legal aid. I met with Kendall. She told me to write a letter describing my situation. I believe you, she said when I showed it to her. She helped me put my facts in order. She removed the emotion from the page. We sent the letter and things started moving. FEMA sent an agent out to inspect the property. When the $6,000 came through, I couldn't believe it. I felt like I wasn't drowning. I used the money for first and last month's rent and a security deposit. It freed up my income for things like sheets, towels, and new shoes for the kids. I bought Ethan a couple video games, and I bought Ashley a French book and some knitting supplies. It didn't feel so tight to go to the grocery store anymore. For a long time after the fire, I couldn't sleep. You play Monday Night Quarterback in your head, 
Could I have done this? Could I have done that? Could I have cut this way? Gone that way? When the police said no, should I have just blown straight through? I think about Ashley's list of losses, her stuffed animals, and the baby clothes of Ethan she was saving just in case he had kids. I think about how much Ethan still blames me for the dog. By the time I got to legal aid, I didn't have much. I had lost everything. I was questioning myself. I didn't have the presence of mind to be objective. What they did for me, helping me with that letter, it might not seem like so much, but to me it was huge. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> ah. But to me it was huge. It gave me back my dignity. It saved me. I owe legal aid of Sonoma County and all of you a de enormous debt of appreciation. There are no words to express how grateful I am to you. Thank you so much. <laughs>